think it's a Q Money watch. Brace, it looks in better condition. Yeah. 36 millimeter, 18K white gold. You gonna earn some money, honey. Say they're pretty much on par, oh, yeah. but I'd actually say the 91 the brace it looks in better condition. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying you see yeah, that there. I yeah, I think so. I think that's in better condition. Yeah. It so, really, that's probably a better one to go for. Yeah, so does it, it don't really see through the age, although yeah. it's a 91, that's a 99. Yeah. yeah, that 91 could only be worn on Saturdays and Sundays, mm. yeah. that could be worn, mm. yeah. Throughout the week. Yeah, mm. I know what you mean. Yeah. So always go for the condition over the yeah. year, if I'm yeah. honest. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's newer or older, yeah, the condition makes the difference. Yeah. What's the price of that Wimbledon one there? Uh that one will be fifteen five. He's got that one. It's gone up. Yeah. I bought I bought one yeah, like that last, last year. What'd you give? I'll give 12, twelve two, I'll give it. Oh cheap. Yeah. yeah. Cheap. What fluid? Yeah. Yeah, cheap. Yeah. Cheap. Done well on that, yeah. I love that one. Yeah, yeah it's lovely that. Yes. It goes well in your skin tone as well. Yeah. It is nice. And um, plus we give you 12 months warranty as well. Right, so right. the warranty covers anything mechanically goes wrong with the watch. Yeah. So it doesn't Just cover like self-inflict damage no. like you feel like a drunk one night breaking yeah. the glass. Yeah. But it covers you for anything mechanically yeah. goes wrong. Yeah. Which it shouldn't but it... The strap's better on that, isn't it? I believe so. Yeah, I, I believe so. so. I'll give it a little wipe as well, look. Get the old microfiber out. Yeah. It's and again, it's not, it's not a massively... Well, it's not even a gap of bracelet, I'll be honest. It's... it's that you can almost pass as like mm. very, very, very good condition on that. On that. Oh. Have you got one without the diamonds? No, I mean no. I could get you a die like a plain dot. Di I'll be honest, the diamonds have the value. Yeah. And it's not overkill because it's factory. No. Yeah. Obviously, but you've got to love it. It's not too over the top. I don't. I don't honestly. I would say to you, I'll go. Yeah. I might say to you, look, I think it's a bit OTT, but honestly speaking, I don't think it is. Yeah. Some are, aren't they? But I suppose what I mean. Yeah, I suppose it just makes no. it a bit more um, feminine, doesn't it? No, no, it's Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's not over the top, no, is it? No, it's not. No, it's not bling. No. See, look, alternatively, if you wanted to, I'd, uh, honestly, I'd, for the sake of difference, I'd say you go for the Dharma Dar, but that'd be your mm. plain champagne option. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Honestly, it, mm. it sort of takes it away because it's mm. looking like an all gold watch. I think the diamonds just add that little bit of difference. Mm. And for the sake of it, you might save yourself like 500 quid. Yeah. Mm. You might as well go for the diamond dial. Mm. It costs you more in Rolex to buy that dial. Can I just try the size down? Is that all right? Yeah, of course you can. Please, just to make sure. Just more in your face. So the thing is, the 31 mils, slight bit smaller, a little more trendier. Yeah. Mm. You don't see them so much. Yeah. But some people like, I like just find it a little bit watch. small. Yeah, I think it might be a bit small for me, you know. What's the price of that one? Uh, 15, 15, five, let me double check, yeah. whatever I'll load it for. I think I like the, the bigger. See, the, the whole game is changing with the women that watch yeah. it. They used to come in and get small 26 mils yeah. all the time. Yeah. Now they're coming, my girls come in and they're getting like big like, like subs that, and like. rubies and yeah. sky dollars even. And I just yeah. think it looks good, it's the, it's the fashion now. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is, yeah. isn't it? So as I mentioned here, um, we're talking about trends. So very often, go back sort of 10 years ago, you'd have a lot of people just coming in and buying, a lot of women coming in and buying like 26 mils, quite standard, um, and they're gradually going up size, they're going up more like men's sizes, 36 mils, 39 mils, 40 mils, even bigger like 42 mils. Um, we've got a few customers come up here, like women, um, they're wearing like sky dwellers, uh, rose, they like two like ru ruby dolls, um, I th personally, I think it looks nice. I do like it on a woman, not wearing a big face watch. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's all down to comfort, and that's what obviously we arranged with this couple. With this couple, and end up getting a thirty-six mil. So oh, happy days. Is there any movement on the price if I could have a deal today? I'll be honest, mate. I, I'm, I, they're, they're pretty up. We obviously tried to 
keep it as low as you yeah, can. Well, yeah, and I tried to be as competitive as I can. Yeah. And we f I think you're fine there. For the, for the, for the condition, condition yeah. and the factory dials, yeah. I think you find they're quite competitively priced. So that's the 91, isn't it? And that's the 91. That's correct, yeah. Yeah. The 91 looks better, yeah. It is. You can see it's sharp still yeah. on the brakes. See these sharp corners? Yeah. See so this one here is like slightly, not smooth, but it's slightly got that curve. Yeah. That's nice and sharp still. Yeah. Especially yeah. on the shoulders. Yeah, I think so. So it's got all the papers in the box. Box, papers, correct, yeah. It's just a bit more dressy, isn't it? A bit yeah. more dressy, a bit more yeah. classy. Yeah. You can choose to, it's like, obviously a dress watch, weekend watch, but a lot yeah. of people's wearing them throughout the day anyway, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, had a woman, I had a woman coming yesterday, she had the rose gold one on, she don't take it off. Yeah. No. She's a little bit careful don't... around London now, yeah. um, yeah. with what was happening and stuff, but she just like, yeah. I wear it to work, every day I wear it to work. Oh, I wear, oh, I've yeah. got silver, I've took it off today, need but. Need servicing that, doesn't it? Yeah, it needs mm. servicing, but. We can I do all that, bear that in mind, servicing, polishing, cleaning. I should have bought it with me then, shouldn't I? We're quicker than Rolex and all. Yeah. And we we tend to be cheaper, and we're isn't quicker. It? So when it comes to watch maintenance, we offer, we offer a servicing package where we can refurb as well and offer parts. So typically a watch, I would say, needs servicing every 18 to 24 months, I would say. Just sort of, it may be working correctly, but you don't know what's going on beyond the face or in the back. So I'd say get a service every 18 to 24 months. You can also include a refurb of that. Um, and then any parts it may or may not need, we can add on later. Um, typically, a service, a refurb, will take around two, two and a half weeks of us. If you do go back to the manufacturer, this case being Rolex, they can give you lead times. At the moment, I think it's any time from like eight to 12 weeks, sometimes even longer. So we're cheaper and we're quicker. Quick is not always the best, I understand, but we do use about three or four watchmakers in the country who are shit hot. Um, and they're very good at their job and that's what creates the efficiency. So if you need servicing, hit us up. We try to put, 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 put a watch into Rolex over there for only 12 weeks. Really? On a service and a clean, two and a half weeks, oh, right, if that. Oh, yeah, 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 he's probably yeah. in. I'd rather you pop it in rather than post it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. fine. There's no point in looking at other ones, is there really? Well, well, if you use all gold, you're gonna like jump up. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, like I mean, they are what they are. Being yeah. the factory thirty single diamond, that's the best combination of the both yeah. you're going to get of that size. Yeah. Where well, if you go to like forty mil, you're going to jump to like thirty five grand. Yeah. Where well, if you go to like forty one mil, like this one for example, then you jump to like thirty eight grand. Yeah. Look at that. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Quite a long way to go then. Oh yeah. <laughs> You'll yeah, we'll take that one. Yeah, let's yeah, do it. Uh, so we have this lovely couple come down for two and a half hours away to come see us. Uh, they see a watch online that's very interested in, come down. Um, was a little bit concerned about the age differences, so I managed to speak about that. Um, and they actually went for the slightly old one, so the condition was better. Um, so it's not always about the newer watch when it comes to slightly old models. And they left very happy, so they got a lovely yellow gold day date 36 mil for champagne down the dark. Good afternoon guys, good evening, wherever you are watching this. I bring to you today a rose gold Richard Mill RM005. This watch is insane. It comes with the exhibition open case back, so you can see the movement. You can actually see parts of the movement in the dial for that skeletonized dial. It comes with a full rose gold case. There's no titanium in this watch. And it comes with the rose gold pin buckle. It is supplied here on a black rubber band. We do have an option to add a red rubber band should you be interested in this watch. It's complete with box and papers and the price is £99,950. £50 shy of £100,000. Do I think it's a good watch? I'm a big fan of Richard Mill, the early models, the RM005 and the RM10. Um, I think value for money. 100k for a rose gold Richard Mill in this particular shape. I don't think it's an expensive watch at all. Um, I don't think you should buy this watch for an investment purposes because I think it's a fuck you money watch. So I think if you wear this watch, you're going to Dubai, you're going to Miami, you're stunting hard. 
So if you can afford to lose some money on it, go out, buy it, enjoy it. You'll be the coolest guy at the bar. Right, a fuck you money watch. Excuse my language, but this is what it is. So a fuck you money watch means that you don't care about the price tag. You're not really caring what the actual product is. You're buying it for clout and you're buying it because it's a hype piece. So this Richard Mill, in my opinion, is a fuck you watch. Wow, call me that morning coffee. Um, so we are in Munich, Germany. Um, we just had breakfast and we are about to head off and do some trading um, at the watch show, which is very exciting. We haven't been since just after lockdown. We've been drinking some proper machine coffee here. It's like liquid. So let's see. What should we ask on the midi? It costs 100 euros. That's going to be like 100. That's probably going to be the sweet thing. 100 euros. 87.5. Or 500 quid less. Mm. That's going to have some money, honey. Oh, that's <laughs> first purchase. Boom, done. Bit of slow start. So we've got one, one purchase here, which is the Navy Santos Cartier. So what I will do, just act quickly. We'll get online. We'll get it sold. Purchase. We're rolling, baby. Please. That's why I'll give you an opportunity. Please. Overspending the company's money again. Chad's spending more of the money we haven't got anymore. <laughs> so, halfway through day one, we've made three purchases so far. Haven't sold one watch. <laughs> it's a little bit quieter than usual, but we're halfway through day one. We've yet to sell a watch. Um, but the buying's been okay. Tomorrow is usually a bit more of a busier day, so we'll go again. See so what we can do for you guys. I'm gonna scout the hall now, see if we can get any lock, lock, say last minute deals. It's midday, but in watch dealer terms, that means the end of the day. So we're gonna try and see if we'll find some deals. If not, we'll be back tomorrow nice and early, and we crack on. Go for it. 200, 200. Right, for Alex. 250, done. My friend, six women, six children. 26 to the pair, which works out. Uh, I can take something on top as well. Um, you have uh, links for this in your shop, maybe uh, one box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we wish, I wish. <laughs> I was thinking, so that's a couple of I'd actually want to catch yeah, you. Yeah, but you're still giving money on top. Yeah, with the Santos as well or not? We ain't got that much stuff. No, we're the part of the show. Oh, we'll leave it the same. Leave it the same. See how we go. I thought it was a sub, it's a sea dweller. Yeah, it's a double. That's quite nice, that. That's nice. We triple it there, yeah. Wow. How was you asking for this? Is this still at the mark two? 60. 60. Oh, well, that'll be double. Beautiful. She gets you getting nice it out. How much is your uh, deep sea as well? Thirteen seven nine. Day two. We're a bit tired today. We was out last night, but we are up. We got coffee and we're out. So today we are heavily buying. So. A couple of watches on us to see if we can get some deals in, but we are heavily buying today. Let's do it. So, the team are doing extremely well, they're holding it down. Shout out to the team back at the penthouse. 
North London, Live and Up please. Um, so whilst we're buying and selling, they're also doing the same. So we're getting it from both angles. So very happy of that. We're getting double ended. <laughs> <laughs> lots of new stock, lots of deals, lots of stuff. <laughs> I know what we're going to buy today, we're going to try. We're going to go mid it. Oyster. How old? Is it the old tinny strap? The pins? Still like pretty pins, yeah. And that's what we don't want, baby. Be mad, 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 mad. I love the best. 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 How much is the single red sub? Hey, how are you? Uh, sorry, the, the, the single red? 22. 22. Amit? Oh. I have a... I'll show you now. No, I have a dog. I have a... I'll show you right now. I think it's nice. Clean as well, sharp the shoulders. She's lost his colour in it. Yeah, that's amazing. That's that's what was that then? Blue? Four to five. It would have been blue. Still protect the Earth Elite. 3800 reference. As long as blue doll. So she gone tropical and lost his blue and she turns to a green. For the great baby, white doll. And you? Mark, sir. 1100. Thank you. Very good, mate. So that's one seven five pounds. It's clean, guys. Magic cross here with the pound. Yeah. You'd find that on Chrono back in the day for like. Yeah. You can wear in Italy or if you want, you can wear on Tom or America. Where in Italy are you based? Where in Italy are you based? Right, so we're on the second day, which is the Sunday. We've not found any deals as of yet. It is 10 past 11. Uh, we call it lapping, so we will go around the actual... Uh, we'll go around the actual show a number of times to make sure we haven't forgotten anything or have we seen something in the cabinet that's changed. A lot of stock changes hands, so a watch you've asked the price for a moment ago is now in another cabinet for a different price, sometimes less because they've done a pie exchange. So, recharging on coffee, let's make it happen. Let's, let's find some deals. I know we're going to find some deals. I reckon we're going to buy another three pieces before we go home. So, the team have managed to sell 11 watches in two days, um, which is fantastic. Whoa. No, I think it's good. I think, right, it, I think it's a fantastic. It's sold 11 watches in two days. So it just shows that there's a high demand there. So we need to be buying stock to replace the stock that we've sold. So happy, happy days. So while them guys were in Munich, me, H, Rio, Tilly and Ella was here back at the penthouse, absolutely smashing it. We done a record 11 watches that day. I'm joking, it's not a record, but yeah, we sold 11 watches. So while them guys were out there buying and selling, I was here selling, keeping the company afloat. The other ones? Okay. Yeah. Well, each or each or uh, together? together? Sorry? Probably. Each or together? Together. Um, my father founded the show in uh, 1989 and it started off in the German Museum in Munich. It was like the first of its kind in Germany and uh, was like with uh, 50 exhibitors because they came out from the vintage furniture and antique stuff and then they started off with watches and then um, we got bigger and bigger and now we are here in uh, Unterschleißheim and um, having like the biggest watch show trade show in Europe and um, yeah and having people from all over the world coming together trading in our system we have like almost 6,000 people but we have active dealers, active people who come on a regular basis um, I would say like six, 700 who come on a regular basis that means 10 times a year and then um, you always have to distinguish between Saturday show it's a dealers only event and then on Sunday we have a public 
watch yeah. event and uh, yes, so it's um, yeah on a Sunday we have like uh, 700, 800 exhibitors, a thousand, twelve hundred visitors, private people coming to the show and yeah, yeah. enjoying our um, with people from South Africa, with people from Brazil, with people from we have. Japanese people, we have people from China, we have people from the Middle East, we have people from the US quite a lot. And South Africa, did I mention that? That's quite far away. And uh, yeah, so you name it, normally we have it. So yeah. we are online, we have uh, home pages for the two events, and we're planning to um, put everything together under one company for the next year. That it's uh, more convenient for visitors and for customers. And so it's online, we have homepages, we're on social media. It's, um, we suffered a little bit with all the COVID pandemic situation mm. because it was a little bit hard to make uh, big conventions with a lot of people coming together from various countries and internationally. Nobody could fly, so it's, we're just getting started again this year and um, yeah so onwards and upwards we're gonna yeah it's gonna be good <laughs> I've been a member of this show since 2009 Max has been a gentleman throughout couldn't say any better things about his himself his dad and the show I think it's a great opportunity if you're starting a new business or you're looking for some luxury watches you know come and check it out we'll put the link in the description below uh, thank you Max thanks for coming on of course always <laughs> yeah Okay. We've just purchased the watch in Germany <laughs> and we sold it to the customer region in England and the dealers from Marbella. <laughs> Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> How long ago did we sell it? Uh, full for the 10th of 2021. So literally a year ago. So I've always been a massive fan of these Munich trips. Me and Jell have been going since we was like 17 years old. I remember when he first took me my first one, showed me it, absolutely fell in love with it. Loved the whole. It's very um, buy by sell sell, very fast paced, a lot of watches in cabinets. Sometimes you might come across a cabinet that's got 60, 70 watches in it. A lot of them could be like bog standard stuff. Um, you might find something in the corner that catches your eye, so that's quite rare. And it's nice to come across that and be able to get that deal in. Um, but the whole atmosphere is amazing. The people are very, very good. <clears throat> still go there now, being this many years on, and you still see the same people you see. So it's quite nice to come across and be able to see them again, shake their hands or whatever, do some deals. Um, this show in particular, uh, being a November show, it's very hot and cold. It can, you can go there, have an amazing show, buy some amazing stock, or it can be people trying to, they might miss that show because they're in their Christmas run up already or whatever. So in this case, it wasn't the best show I've ever had, but it wasn't the worst show. Um, overall, you know, it's paid for, so we managed to cover it and with the bits we did get, so it was good. Um, and it's still nice to get out of there, show your face, um, network a bit, and uh, yeah, just overall good. So we thought we'd bring Mikey, document it for you as well, and um, really show you guys what it's about. Uh, right, so I started going Munich when I was 16 years old. So that's when I very first started selling watches and buying watches. Munich was a place for me to learn my trade. So over the years, you know, going in as like an amateur, it was a great place for me to learn. I've been going there for every six weeks for like the past 14 years now. So. Yeah, you could say I'm a loyal member. I've been going for a long, long time. Um, times have changed though. So the show we just went to recently was the first show we've been to since Brexit and COVID. So in the last two to three years, there's been some huge changes. Um, I will try to go to as many as I possibly can in the future, but it has to apply within the rules of what is going on around Europe right now. So brilliant show. I owe a lot of my success to these shows. Uh, like I say, times have changed, you know, it's only good when the Euro is in our favor, when you're buying or when you're selling, when the Euro goes down. But fantastic shows. Shout out to Max, who's always, always looked after me and made me feel welcome. And yeah, we look forward to coming to plenty more shows in the future. The reason why I don't go to Munich anymore is because I have too many Munich beers and I never make the show. So this time I didn't get the invite. 
uh, because I'm basically a sack of shit and I never make the show because I'm always too drunk. Yes guys, back from Munich now. So the watch show overall in general turned out to be okay, very average. We didn't actually sell a watch, which is not good news. However, we did manage to pick up four new pieces for stock. Uh, we've got two diamond pieces, a 418K, and a stainless steel sub date. So, literally just received these pieces this morning. So, we're going to tag them up, take some photos, get them uploaded to Instagram. So, stay tuned. Calatrava, yeah. Calatrava, 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 so it's the 5120G reference with the exhibition case back. 36 millimeter, 18K white gold, 2005 box and papers. Right. In stock today for 15,750. So we've had some aftershaves sent to us from Cologne by Image. They are lovely. This one is our personal favorite. It's Arabic Air, because it smells like Louis Vuitton. Listen, don't jump into it. Yeah, We're here to help, you know, you just popped up here. Whatever you want to do, we'll help you. If you want to part exchange your watch, whether you want to keep your watch. But I'd rather be honest with you and say, like, I think your watch is capped at what it is worth-wise. But you're gonna have to you're gonna have to part with some dough to get an investment piece. Yeah. You are. Me guys from local. Kent. Kent, oh, that's not. Yeah. There's so many to choose from this day and age as well yes. now. The models have gone crazy. We get phone calls and they go, oh, is this all you got? We're like, oh my god, like what else do we need to have in stock? See, I would have said to you, if you didn't have a dial code, take it to Rolex, send it in for a service and a dial change, but you've got a dial code, so it's never gonna benefit your watch. Like, you could have invested like 1,500 on a dial and a service and got like a Wimbledon. Then you're laughing, you're up. But now you've got it on a dial code. You can still do it, some jewelers don't care. But we would. I think your watch is a seven, eight bag watch. That's so much better than this. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And you're talking like a 20 year difference in the age. How uh, old is that one? This would be 19... Okay, yeah. 1991. There's a massive difference. So it's a tough one. I think what I might do, I might just sit on this one. I'd look. I might just sit, leave, leave this one and then if I'm gonna buy something, just start with, start with something else. I would, if I was you, I'd probably do that. Mm. And if you want to wear it for yourself and you don't care about what other jewelers say, send it in to get a Rolex style at Wimbledon. It's going to cost you about £1,200, £1,500. I'd say do that. I don't think you need to jump out of this watch. Yeah, no. It's a cool watch. You know, when I did first get it, I thought, you know, I'm, I thought if I'm going to be keeping all the watches. I ain't going to sell them or trade them. Yeah, no, so I'm, do that. You're not, as I said now, you, you ain't going no lower. Yeah. If anything, if you hold on to it for another year, as it is, might go up like £600, £700. Would be between like seven to seven two. It's worth like eight grand, being totally honest, but it's the ivory. Where it's dial coded, it's not like we can get a dial change on it. That means dial coded ivory, so it relates to that dial. Um, so I can't even buy a better dial for it. But if you stick it on like someone like Chrono 24 or eBay, you'll probably get an offer of around 8,000, maybe 8.2 if you're lucky. Is it, is it, is it an investment lot, this one? Well, what did you pay for it? I don't care, it doesn't matter, yeah, no I difference think, to I me. I think I've paid about seven and a half. So probably not then. Probably not. How long you had it? Four or five years now. Oh yeah, so nice, yeah, no so good. Nice. So I'll be honest, you could have put seven, seven and a half grand into like a stainless steel GMT back then and it'd be worth 10 to 11 grand now. So if something hasn't gone up in value and you're buying it for an investment, then no, that's that's not probably a great watch. Mm. It hasn't gone down in value as such. Like just, you've got to wear a watch for four or five years. It's just and, the same. Yeah. So if I wanted to swap it for an investment one that ones as investment roughly about the same price. See so then in my opinion I wouldn't say it'd be worth it because you're gonna to need to put money on top to then in order to go again. Like if you're gonna be coming in a what, what what were you looking at? I'm saying like really next level up from like this, I'm thinking all stainless steel, 
like Wimbledon. Come over here a second, anyway. Let me show you. I, I was looking to purchase something else, but for investment purposes. Because that's not going down anymore. So that's stop that's now. Just, that that's, that's just, that will not go below seven thousand pounds. It will not happen. No. So it's up to you whether you're thinking, I'll keep that because I'm not going to lose no money, or do you want to put that seven grand, add like three grand, and think that ten grand can now go up. That's the truth. Well, See what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's what me and Rio are saying. The 10 bag range. So you're not getting a Wimbledon. Yeah, it's hard. You're going for a watch that might only go up 500 pound. Might only go up 800 pound. And I don't think that's a good enough investment for you to go again. I, I'm In my head, I'm thinking go to a Grey Rhodium Yacht Master. Oh, yeah. 13 grand territory. That, with the, with the thought process that that'll be a 15 grand watch in two years. But then it's, it's still, you invest a lot these days, not to earn a lot, because that's just the watch market, that's the way it is. You're never gonna buy a watch for, just for example, 10 grand and expect it to jump in six months. It's, 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 it's a, a year or two minimum. Yeah. Minimum. Maybe longer. Some of these watches, you don't know, might get discontinued or, in a year or two. Listen, time, so. take the gamble. Go for like a Still on Rose root beer. They was 22, 23 grand this time last year. They're now down to about 18 and a half, 19 grand. If they shoot back up again, then you're laughing. But you've got to be in it to win it. So when they go up to that price again, it's your choice whether you cash out there or then. Mm. We have some people now go, oh, you, we messaged you back last year, you offered me 19 grand. Now you're 16. That's the market, that's the way it is. Do you know what I mean? It's like... What about the female watches? For investments? Mm. Not for investments. No. You won't go wrong again, but it'll be like this. You'll just, you'll just hold this money. Yeah, you won't go wrong with like, a still on gold factory ladies like right guys as you can see this gentleman come in and was wanting to upgrade his watch in all honesty we'll always give you our honest opinion and in this situation for the amount of money he wanted to put on top of his watch and upgrade i didn't think he would be getting himself into a better investment piece for the future so on this occasion i actually advise him to keep his watch and maybe later down the line you know come back and buy an in another watch because his watch wasn't going down any less than what he'd already paid for it. So, in my opinion, why get out of a good asset? You know, I, it'd be wrong for me to say, sell me this watch and I can earn loads of money on it. On this occasion, I told him to maybe go to Rolex, get a service dial, you know, work on investing your own watch and it'd be worth more. So, if you do come up and see us, you know, we're not just going to try and take your money off you. If we think you could be advised to be investing into something else, we will give you our opinion on that matter.